inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. My guest on the podcast today got into a lot of credit card debt when he was younger. He found Dave Ramsey and followed Dave's debt snowball to pay off all of his debt. And once he was debt-free, he decided that he never wanted to borrow money for anything ever again. So when he started buying rental properties, the only option he had was to pay cash. So on the show today, we're going to find out how he's been able to build a rental portfolio only using cash. He has never borrowed a penny to build his rental portfolio. Joining us on the show today from Indiana is Brad Spencer. You may remember Brad. He's been with us before in the past. He's a great guy, real incredible landlord, and we're going to get into his story. But first, let's take a real quick break. We'll come right back and we'll meet Brad. The first step in buying a rental property is to get pre-qualified. And I would suggest you work with a lender that specializes in working with investors because The last thing you want to have happen is to get to closing and find out the money's not there and you can't close. The lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She's a nationwide lender and she'll pre-qualify you for free if you mention Rental Income Podcast. Find out more today. Contact Chaley at RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E lendinggroup.com. NMLS 42056. It can be a real challenge to stay organized and keep track of all your rental income and expenses for tax time. Most people end up with a pile of receipts that you need to sort through and make sense of. I want to let you know about an easier way. It's a software that I use called Rental Hero. It was built specifically for rental property owners. They have a really easy to use web portal as well as an app where you can easily input all your income and expenses. You can take pictures of receipts and you're done with the paper receipts for good. They have a free 30-day trial. You can try it out. No credit card required. If you don't like it, there's nothing to cancel. Just go to rentaltrial.com. That's rentaltrial, T-R-I-A-L. Com. Hey, Brad, thank you so much for coming back on the show. So when I had you on the show last time, I didn't realize some of your backstory that when you were younger, you got yourself into a little bit of trouble with debt. What happened? My uh, my first bad experience is that when I got married, uh, we both got in bad financial debt using credit cards. And it was mostly eating out every night, restaurants, buying things that we probably shouldn't have bought just simply because we had a credit card to buy it with. Right. And I thought to myself, well, if I could just make the monthly payments every month, there's nothing to worry about. Not, not given a care that this monthly debt that you're building up every month is like a snowball and it just builds more and more and more to where, um, you really put yourself in a hole. So one day it just dawned on me, wow, this is, I'm barely able to make the payments now. This debt's really increasing more and more. So uh, just little by little, I started out with cutting up our credit cards. We ate home uh, home every day. I looked for other ways to make money. We had yard sales. She was working. I was working. We were trying to find better ways to to get out of debt. So once I got out of debt, I never went back. That is great. to improve my life. So flash forward to today, do you have any personal debt at all? No, zero. All right, your house, your car, no credit cards, everything no. is 100% paid for. Everything is 100% paid. Even my businesses, I have zero debt. I refuse to go back in debt. Now, no. and tell me about your rental portfolio. So you, in addition to, to having all your personal debt wiped out, You've been able to invest with no debt at all. You, you've built your entire rental portfolio by using cash? That's right. You know, as quickly as debt can, can snowball to a big mound, so can wealth. You, right. know, you, you just start little at a time. And the key to real estate is that you don't get rich quick. You get rich slow. It takes right. time. It takes patience. And that's what I th- learned through 25 years of doing this. So what does your rental portfolio look like today? I've got about 12 properties, one of them being commercial property. Uh, all of them are paid for. 
I have great renters. Uh, as I mentioned before, I keep them, I keep each property about five years, sometimes a little longer. And then I, I sell it and buy, usually buy about two more properties. So if I can. what's the advantage to not having any debt? Like, do you, do you just, um, feel better about it or is it just that much more profitable when you don't have mortgages? It's, it's peace of mind knowing that if, if all my properties went empty, if all my renters left me, I would still be okay. Mm -hmm. I would, I go to bed at night knowing that tomorrow I'll get my, get myself some new renters, but there's no outstanding bills that I will have to pay. That will sink me, you know. Anytime you take on debt, you take on risk. Yeah. Risk is a is a horrible, horrible concept, especially if it goes bad. Yeah, and I it's mean, something you don't want in your life that will consume you because debt and leverage will consume you at nighttime when you're trying to sleep, knowing that you got an empty house but you still have a ha- house payment to make. Yeah, I mean that that is really the the most expensive and the scariest time of, of being a landlord with leverage is you have an empty house where you, you're not making any money on it. The tenant moved out. You probably got to spend some money to fix it up. And now you've got a mortgage payment to make. So you, you can really get in trouble with leverage if you're not careful. Yeah. And leverage always seems to invite his cousin and that's called Murphy law. <laughs> and he will move yep. into that house's bedroom and cause, uh, a leak in the ceiling or a, a busted gas line. Yeah. Or recently I just had a, I have a rental home. I had a car run through the house. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's things you don't expect that Murphy yep. will bring. Yep. Absolutely. And, uh, that if you have a mound of financial debt, you're just, it's going to sink you. Eventually it will sink you. Now I, I think a, big part of your success, like probably the biggest part of your success. And I I really want to highlight this for people is that having no personal debt, I I think really allowed you to build wealth. Do you think that was the biggest part of your success was not having that debt hanging over your head? So you were able to save more money and invest more money into rentals? Absolutely. And I've been on both sides of the scale. Before, when I had leverage and debt, leverage and debt was controlling my life. Mm. And leverage and debt kept me down. And leverage and debt kept me in debt to where I couldn't see nothing other than just making the payments. Right. right. Now that I, I don't have any debt, I am driven by success. Success opens your mind, opens uh, your pers- perspective on seeing the big picture of things because you're not held down by that debt. Yeah. And you're able to see the future and you're able to see, okay, uh, I, this house looks good to me. This house looks good to me. Let's see who can give me the best price because I'm paying cash now. Yeah. You, you, you know, what's really interesting is that, so you use Dave Ramsey's debt snowball to pay down the debt. And I feel like you're using the opposite of the snowball to build your wealth. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that right. is really awesome. Now, so what are you doing with the rental income? So you've got low overhead. You're able to save money from your business every month. Do you just let the rental income pile up and then eventually you have enough to buy another rental? Exactly. Yeah. And of course, I've never been in this situation. The economy is so good right now that it's tough to find uh, pre-foreclosed homes because everybody's doing it. Uh, The economy's you know, good. It's kicking. Everybody's working. Uh, f- uh, thankfully, is is a, it, I'll use that term. There are not a lot of foreclosures to pick from right, right. now. At yeah. least in my, it's area. a tough market. Know. Absolutely, it's a tough market. Yeah. Plus, you got everybody and their brother watching these TV shows on how to flip homes. Right, in, brings in more competition. Market, yep. You know. Yep. So it's getting tougher and tougher. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what I do. I I got cash to where uh, I build up, and if I sell at home in five years. Usually, I just buy me two more homes, mm-hmm. and uh, usually, I, I look for bad homes in good neighborhoods. Now, and that's what I go after a three one with a garage. Now, when you were building your portfolio back in the early days, did it seem really slow, like it was taking forever to yes. to get enough money? So, like, yes. how did you keep yourself motivated? It's a business, and 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 
whenever you succeed at a business, it's motivating. Right. So, and like I stated before, you get rich slow, and it, it, you you accumulate wealth slowly in, yeah. in real estate. But and it takes time, and it takes a lot of patience. What what I think is interesting though is so it it starts off slowly, but I feel like now with having twelve properties paid off, you've got those rent checks coming in every month, and sure you've got some expenses, taxes, and insurance, and some repairs here and there. But do you feel like now things are really accelerating with all your yes. rentals? And it- oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know I'm no longer in that fear of debt. I'm no longer in that fear of leverage. I, I am successfully well enough to where I can sleep at night and not have to worry about a single thing as far as any type of risk. I love that. Other than, you know, other than maybe having to deal with the insurance company if something goes right. wrong and, or God forbid somebody gets hurt, but just that freedom, you know, Dave Ramsey talks about freedom and, and knowing that, you know, you, you, the grass feels a little different when you walk out and you, you have a paid off home and you walk in that backyard knowing that land is yours and knowing that house is yours is a, it's a totally motivating concept. Yeah. Now in, in today's world, I, I feel like everybody wants things now. We don't want to wait and saving money to pay cash for a rental. It, it's a really kind of a long term game that you're playing. So like, how do you, what advice would you give to somebody that's maybe younger or maybe even to your younger self to, to just stick with it? And to, to realize that this isn't something that's going to happen overnight. You just got to accumulate your wealth. You got to live on those seven steps that Dave Ramsey talks about, about financial peace of saving a thousand dollars and, you know, food, shelter and clothing and, and knowing the priorities of, of, your, of your life, your financial life that you have to do to save the money. And knowing that you did it without any debt, knowing that you did it without any type of risk that's going to sink you. That, you know, that's a motivating factor. Right. Now, did, did you ever think about maybe using a little bit of debt um, that maybe you, if, if you had some debt, maybe you could have bought more houses or you could oh, have yeah. grown your portfolio faster? So like, what, what stopped you from, from taking on debt? No, oh, there's been several times that I could have get, I could, you know, I looked at a house phenomenal deal get you know you make your money at the buy the old real estate Mm -hmm. yeah somebody was selling a house an extremely good good price to me and i walked to the door and i didn't have the money at the time to buy it but i know hey i can go out to this bank and get me a hundred thousand dollar loan at a drop of a hat because this is a really good deal and and i i i I thought to myself i need this home i need it but i literally was going to talk to lady got to the front door And I turned around and something just turned me around and said, no, don't do this. And I'm glad that happened Yeah, because I didn't want to get back in a debt and get back in a situation to where, you know, I'm I'm taking on risk again because I, you know, every car, the cars I have, they're 10 years old or older. I don't live high on the hog. You know, I, I calculate everything that I do financially and it's, it's helped me. So has that been hard like as you've you've grown your wealth over time and and as you become more successful has it been hard to not give in to that temptation to maybe buy a new car or to inflate your lifestyle a little bit Yes it has and and I still struggle with it I see things that boy I I, I that's something I would like to get a loan on and yeah. buy I like I like to have me a bigger house I like to have me a swimming pool yeah. I like to have me a, a another car, uh, a luxurious car to drive around. But but once I start thinking about the payments and that that monthly payment will never go away, it right. seems like yep. Uh, yep. it just it just once I have because I've been down that path and I have had car payments and I had credit card payments and I have had mortgage payments and 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 the sickening feeling that I had in my stomach yeah. about it every single month that all I felt like I was doing was was going to work, coming home and making car payments. So, so do, I didn't want that anymore. Do you feel like if you took a little bit of debt, cause I, I feel like if you took on a mortgage right now, like really like there's nothing bad that could happen that you couldn't handle with having 
your day job and with with your paid off rentals that you know even if like you had eight vacancies you would always be able to make that mortgage payment but do you think that if you took that step and bought bought something using debt that it would maybe spiral out of control again yeah i think it's uh a little bit like giving drunk a drunk a drink. yeah I mean, right that somebody's been sober for so long and you're saying you know just this one shot won't won't hurt you just take just take this one shot of tequila and it, you know that's all but as soon as you take that you think well this this could lead to another one and this could lead to, right. lead to another house yeah. for me to buy so i just I, i'd rather not just to I'd stay away from it yeah just stay away from it it's too tempting and like i said murphy's law anything can happen to you i could go two hundred thousand dollars in debt buying more homes but the next day I'm, I, something might happen to me and i end up in the hospital for right months, right now, so it's just not a good way to go your plan is just so basic and simple and it, it just seems like such a good plan that, like, I, I don't understand why more people don't invest this way. It seems like every real estate guru is out there telling you, take on as much debt as you can. Why do you think that so many real estate investors are so in love with leverage? Like, why do you think there aren't more people like you out there? Uh, well, I think you heard, you, you, you said it earlier about being patient and, and, mm. and not, uh, you know, this takes time and it's, it is boring. Yeah. And yeah, there, there, I mean, I can go out today and easily get a half million dollars of financing and buy me a slew of maybe 10 or 20 more homes if I wanted to, but I don't want to do that. Yeah. It's just, it's, if once you've been on both sides and you realize you're on the side of success when you have zero debt, when you right. have no worries and you're looking out instead of being controlled by the debt, you're controlled by your success and you're controlled about outlook and looking for new homes. Right. That's your motivation. Right. But I think going back, I really, I think the, the people that is, that are saying, you know, use leverage, use debt it, because it sounds exciting. Mm. It sounds like, uh, you know, anybody can do it, which most people can. Most people can get in debt and most people can get in leverage, but not not a lot of people can get out of it. Right, and right. That's what you got to look at. Now, uh, another part of your success, and you, um, you, you mentioned this earlier, was that you're not afraid to sell properties, that if, if you buy a property, you know, just to make up some numbers, if you bought a property for 100000 and it appreciates to 200000 you're not afraid to sell that property, take the profit, and then maybe buy two properties w- with that. Right. Is, is so? Is, is do I have that right? Is that yes? That the other part yeah. of your secret? Yeah, I, I don't. None of my properties, and it's true in every business. You don't become emotionally attached. Mm-hmm. You, you're in there. The goal of any business is make a profit. So you're in there to make a profit. So you're in there to to, to see opportunities. Of have of selling your ha- selling whatever property you have and buying two more properties, and I've had some people say, "Why don't you keep it ten years or longer instead of five years?" Well, if I do that, I'm giving up an opportunity to buy houses that I see are good deals. Right. So I'm always looking for that good deal, and I'm always looking for a way to to increase my portfolio and become more su- successful. So is there a certain percentage gain that if a property is as appreciated by a certain percentage that you look to sell or is it just really kind of individual to the property? It's individual. I look at one and think, well, this would be a good sale because they built a new school around there and it's a growing area. And, and, I, and I think to myself, uh, uh, this is a hot market market right here. Let's let's sell this property. OK, OK. But but also, if I have some really good renters, and if I got a family in there, I don't kick them out. I mean, I, I uh, if they didn't want to stay longer, I'll let them stay longer. Or if I see another good deal around that area, another house I could buy, I'll move them into that house. Mm, yeah, you know. So I, I'm not into kicking families out just because I want to make some more money. I, just, right. I don't feel good about that. So l- let me review exactly how you did this because I I, I think it it's just such a a basic plan, and I, I really believe anyone could do this. So the, the first thing you did 
is you kept your personal expenses really low. Like you never gave in to lifestyle inflation. You never took on any debt and you saved as much as you could every month. That's correct. You also, for the rentals, you save all of the cash flow, right? You're not spending any of the the, the cash flow every month. And that's that's another mistake young investors make. They they as soon as they get some money coming in, they go out and on a spending spree for themselves. And you don't want to do that. You want to always reinvest in your business. Mm-hmm. Always yeah. reinvest the money back into that business because that's the only way you're going to grow it. Right. So then your your third step is you only buy rentals when you have cash. You, you never were tempted to take on leverage if you found a good deal. It didn't matter if you didn't have the cash, you didn't buy it. Oh, that's, yeah. Right. I, I'm tempted. I'm still tempted today on seeing things that would think, wow, I can go out and give me a half million dollar loan and buy these houses, but I just don't do it right. because I don't want to go back to that way of living. Right. And then the fourth step, the fourth key to your success was selling property. So if you have a good gain, you take it and you use that money to buy two properties. That's correct. So that, yeah. that's that, that's so simple. I, I love it. So where do you go from here? Like, do you ever see yourself retiring and living off your rental income? Uh, I'm, I'm getting to that point. I just turned 50 this year. Uh, 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 you know, I'm going to work another at least 15 more years of my regular job. But uh, that's my goal is to have enough rental homes where I can just retire and maybe get a, a management company to take in, you know, help me deal with this the way I want it taken care of. Um, yeah. The, you know, I feel like I'm kind of retiring now because I got a, a great system, a great way to find good renters, a great way to work with them to make sure I'm being paid on time, making sure they got a nice home to live in, making sure that their kids are happy. And so it, 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 it took me a long time, but I finally got a good system. On, I love it. Well, on. Brad, congratulations on all your success. I'm so happy for everything you've accomplished And if you are looking to build a rental portfolio and you don't have the patience to save up cash to buy your rental property, the lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She's a nationwide lender and she specializes in helping investors buy rental property. She has a ton of different loan programs. And what I like about Chaley is she will take the time to understand exactly what you want to accomplish. For example, if you want to get your properties paid off as quick as possible, Chaley can help you come up with a plan to do that. If you want to find out more or set up a time to talk to Chaley, just go to ridgelendinggroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E, lendinggroup.com. If you mention Rental Income Podcast, she will waive all of the pre-qualification fees. NMLS 42056. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to the podcast. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. We've got new interviews every single Tuesday. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.